Welcome back guys. Today we're going to be looking at the four fountain pens that I've inked up currently for the month of February, which is almost coming to an end. I've also got my Mont Blanc around the world 80 days Meister stock. This is a roller ball, so it's not really a fountain pen, but I've been using that quite a fair bit as well recently. My Kilk Nova Baroque and my Faber Castell. Um, that one has been rotated out, the ink's finished, and I thought, let me just bring some of my other pens back in. I've still got my Jinhao Centennial 100, I've still been using that. Um, what we've got lined up for today's video is just going to be a quick overview of my Mont Blanc 159, which I've had reviewed recently, about three weeks ago. My Jinhao Twin Dragon, which I've spoken about three, four months ago. The Twisby, I've only just uploaded a video reviewing that and I've kind of fallen back into using this and really started to appreciate this. Mont Blanc Meister stuck around the world 80 days. That's in a rollerball. We'll get into that near somewhere in the video. In the Centennial, uh, Jinhao Centennial, I've kind of grown into using that pen and I've been appreciating them more and more. Uh, so I'm just going to get started talking about the Jinhao Tin Dragon. So this is one heavy pen. It is outrageous with its design. I'm surprised about how much I've got this for. It is, uh, you, what I liked about it is the red jewels across the eyes of the dragon and the center banding of the cap. I believe it would say Jin Hao in Chinese across the center banding. I love the pen for the design. However, this really is not the kind of pen you would use in terms of functionality. Um, it, it's so heavy that within three, four minutes of doing intense heavy writing, your, your palms are gonna start aching. Um, one of the best things I will say about this pen, however, it that it posts incredibly well. Um, it feels like a very solid pen. Of course, it's probably made out of metal. Uh, the nib is your standard Jin Hao dual toned nib. It doesn't say what um, variant this one is, whether it's medium, fine. I would probably guess it's a medium. Um, one of the things that I find interesting about this pen is that I've left it out for two, three months since October and it has never dried up on me. I think I've got this in Waterman's red ink. I can't re exactly recall the name of it and it has performed quite admirably and I've never had any major issues. It's even quite handy when it comes to reverse writing. Gently though, um, not the most wettest of inks but one of the bigger issues i have with this pen as i said is the weight it's not the most comfortable pen but the thing that draws to me is the ridiculous design it's so heavy but the design is just one of those conversation pieces i've had people uh, comment on it thinking oh my goodness me like check this pen out like look at it it must be super expensive i think if you're lucky you can get this for 30 pounds but this is definitely not one of the pens you would buy for long duty writing because believe me you will start getting aches and pains from it and we'll have to switch it out so probably one of the better pens to get just because why the hell not the next pen will be the Jin Hao 159. I had a very bad start with this pen. You could see that on the review. So every single pen that I'll be talking about, there will be a time, there will be like a review in the um, description below for you to have a look at. I'm sure that this is a very dependable pen for a lot of people. I 100% don't doubt that some people would have fantastic time with their Jin Hao's. I have some really good Jin Hao's, uh, like the Centennial 100 I'll be going into, but for some reason, I think there must have been a quality control issue with the nib. I've had a slow start with it. I, I found that it was like as if I was writing on a sheet of ice, to be honest. Um, I am using this at work. I've got this in Diamine Ancient Copper. I mean, occasionally you will find that this pen performs admirably. However, I find that there is a certain direction where I would perform a stroke and it just fails on me completely. I mean, so far, so good. 
but it's almost like I do a diagonal upstroke. Um, it's not the smoothest pen. I, I think it's more to, when you're making swift diagonal movements that the nib just fails to register and it just feels very scratchy and I tend to have it skip on me. There you go, quite a fair bit. Um, it's definitely not the smoothest writer, if I'll be honest with you. And I think it's it, it might speak about the quality of Jin Hao's as opposed to the pen itself. I'm sure if I bought another 159, I would never have had this issue. I think this would have been the X159, actually. I have a 159. I've not even inked that up yet. Um, like I say, it's, it's a very standard Jin Hao um, dual tone nib. I've got this in fine, and since my last video, I think the root cause of the problem could be that the twines are probably a bit too close together, and it might need a little bit of tweaking. Uh, I probably wouldn't go through the hassle of that personally for a very inexpensive pen. I still like it because it's uh, it's a very... Um, the, the color is quite nice. I, I, I haven't got any issue with that. I don't really have a green pen. Um, and, 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 you know, I've had it coupled with the Ancient Copper, which goes well with the pen, I think. And it's a very, I just like the racing green style to it. But I've had problems with this pen. I don't think I'd be using this a terrific amount. I'm going to see if I can tweak the nib a little bit and space out the twines. If you give it a good bit of uh, force, you will find that the ink does flow really nicely. I just can't seem to figure out why it feels like I'm writing on a sheet of ice with this pen. So this is probably going to get rotated out very quickly. Don't be surprised if you don't see in, in my March what I've got inked up uh, video. Goodness me, it looks like the month of Jen House, to be honest. I've only just realized that halfway through filming this video. This is my Jin Hao Centennial uh, in Galaxy Edge. Um, I absolutely love this pen. I uh, had this reviewed not so long ago. I still can't get over the wonderful color scheme that this has and the shine that the uh, blue barrel and cap has. And it's kind of mixed in with different shades of blue and black. It's a mesmerizing pen, 100%. Um, if you can find it in this color, definitely go for it. There might be a few other much more different color schemes out there. Um, but I really have enjoyed using this pen. I've uh, got a little story for you guys. And I hope you guys might be able to relate to it. Again, it doesn't post very well. So I'm just going to leave the cap to the side. I just, I, I really do enjoy what they've done with the end of the cap with the Jin Hao logo. That, that's really, it gets me all the time. Beautiful gold um, finish to the clip and the center banding also along with the section as well which is in a nice white finish but also you've got the gold trims to help you know, again you've got your standard Jin Hao nib um, performs admirably this pen uh, I have this in my Mont Blanc Midnight Blue so little story I was doing a shift at work, uh, I work as a GP basically, and um, it is quite stressful these days. And I'm finding that sometimes there are some really, really bad days. Uh, this was one of the days where I just had a lot of work, massively overwhelmed. I had to do a home visit for one of my patients who was quite unwell, and it was a struggle, you know, I was very tired. I sat down, they offered me a very comfortable chair, popped out my notepad, started taking notes with this pen, and all of my problems just went away. This nib is just so smooth, and it's never been an issue for me. And I find that quite strange, considering that the previous pen, the Jin Hao X159, was such a difficult pen to deal with in terms of the feeling that it gave me. In here, I've never had any issues. And when I went to the home visit and I started putting pen to paper, the nib just glided across the paper. I could have stayed there taking notes for hours and hours and hours. I mean, that home visit was quite 
it, it wasn't that bad. It, it felt like a very nice time only because the feeling that this pen gave me. And I think this is what draws uh, people to fountain pens or just pens in general or different kind of writing instruments that sometimes it can evoke amazing types of feelings and 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 that really made my day um i only then had to go back to do an out of hour session at a local hospital but um you know it was a difficult day but i think the fountain pen has absolutely made it a an incredible um time it just made me think okay i'm glad that i've taken this up as a hobby uh and and i guess i hope to hear from the comments whether you guys have had similar such experience but like I say, this is just a stunning pen, um, a showstopper, really just beautiful color scheme and fantastic performer well, overall. Hasn't really given me any issues. I had this inked in Mont Blanc Midnight Blue. And I think it might be that the quality of the Mont Blanc King might explain why I've had such a smooth writing experience. I mean, even in reverse writing, I've, I've not had the best of luck with reverse writing, but fantastic just look at that reverse writing no issues whatsoever very juicy very juicy ink flow so the twisby i've literally reviewed this last week and it's a pen i've had for a year for some reason i wasn't so drawn to it up until recently when i wanted to give it another go i've seen so many videos about this pen uh across many different channels and i thought to myself Do you know what let me give my own take on it and i am a little bit annoyed at myself for not for having passed up utilizing this pen for so long because i've absolutely fallen for this pen um i guess the reason i wasn't so keen on it was because it was a little bit I, I wasn't feeling the whole demonstrator aspect. But if you take that aside, this is one magnificent performing pen from Taiwan. And I'm going to correct myself because the last video I said it was, this was a Chinese built pen. It's not. It's, it's, it's from Taiwan. Um, I, I mean, the nib is amazing. I love the Twisby logo. It kind of gives me some, as I said, you know, weird kind of ninja vibes or something. But I don't know um really cool logo i've got this in waterman's harmonia screen um in terms of how the ink flows i mean it's fantastic i could write for ages and ages with this pen and i can never get tired but it 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 really when i talk about it a pen gliding across a paper and I was going to give it a scale out of 1 and 10. This one will come pretty close to a to an 8 out of 10. And my Jinhao Centennial probably would be a 7, 7.5. I think the one pen that I could give it a 10 would be the my Mont Blanc Rouge et Noir, that which I've got in fountain pen. Um, it never skips. It never skips. Nope. You will never have that problem. The flow across all different directions and all different types of strokes is consistent and it's so smooth. I mean, it's supremely smooth. I think I've actually, I've not cleaned this out and I'm told that it's actually quite straightforward to flush the ink out and clean. You probably will have to completely detach the piston uh and do a deep deep thorough clean but I, i'm gonna want to fill this up in probably the diamine oxblood and just really play around with the different ink colors because i think with these types of demonstrator pens you can turn the pen into what you want it to be based off the ink that you uh place and it, it takes a form of its own i'd like to liken this pen like um star wars and jedi they have different crystals and you know depending on what side you're on sith or dark side the color of the crystal kind of gives the identity to the blade bit of a tangent there but this is how i feel about this pen i am looking into getting a few other twisbees with different color schemes for the piston and the cap um because you know 
that can make a lot of difference with the type of ink that you filled up. This is a fantastic beginner pen. If you want to know how things work, want to know the mechanical side of pens, definitely, definitely do not pass up on this pen. I don't know how I slept on this thing. Um, it's brilliant. And I think it's probably one of the best pens you can get as a, you know, university student or going to class or school or whatever, but also, um, I mean, I haven't got a bad thing to say about it. I, I did get bored of it initially, but I've come back and I'm looking at at some point expanding my collection and just having a section full of demonstrators with different color inks and combinations. That's the fun about this pen. And, you know, you, you will never go wrong with this. I'm just going to see the, uh, the the reverse writing caps. I, it posts phenomenally well. Um, again. I don't have the best of luck with reverse writing, but here we go. No concerns with reverse writing. It, ha it has not skipped. It has not skipped. Decent enough ink flow. Don't pass up on this pen, especially if you're looking into getting into fountain pens. Last but not least, uh, it's not a fountain pen, but nevertheless, I have to give this a lot of respect. This is my Mont Blanc Meisterstock. It's a wedding gift, and I got it in the Around the World 80 Days. Um, I brought this pen back out of my uh, collection after having used the Jin Hao Twin Dragon. I mean, this thing gave me arthritis of my hands, if I'll be honest with you. Um and I said to my wife, you know what, I can't, I can't keep writing with this. I'm going to get out the Mont Blanc. And gee, what do I say? I mean, the if I'm to compare a homage pen in the X159, there, you can tell that there's uh, some design elements that Jin Hao has taken inspiration from the Meisterstark. Uh, it, but it will never really compare. This feels very light and, and I, I i don't feel like i mean i'm not even going to bother commenting on the build quality and stuff like that so let's just ignore that you know mont blanc is a luxury brand brand they will go streets ahead but this even though it's in a rollerball posts fantastically well since using the Jin Hao, this has given me a lot of oh my goodness me what's happened there bit of a blooper I'm having difficulties posting this, but as a rollerball, I think the reason it's skipping is because I haven't used this a tremendous amount. Um, oh, this is really bad, and I feel really bad showing this, but either way, I mean, despite the fact that it's kind of dried up a little bit, the quality of the material to make this pen, the resin, it's just such a joy to write with. It feels, I wouldn't say it's heavy, nor is it light, but it just fits like a glove in the hand. I'm probably going to have to replace the refill because it, it, it has dried up on me, to be honest. But I, I wouldn't really put that off anyone buying it. Just make good use of these pens. Um, a pen like this really requires a lot of uh, special moments to write with uh, and I'm probably going to be using it a little bit more frequently because I just feel like it's just such a powerful statement piece in all honesty um, there will come a point where I'll probably be able to purchase a fountain pen variant of the Meisterstark um, but either way I'm very pleased that I have a version of this uh, and it's a limited edition. One of the things that I would say as a buyer's tip really is if you're ever going into a jewelry store where you will find them selling luxury pens, specifically Mont Blancs as well, or even a Mont Blanc boutique, uh, if you find a luxury, uh, sorry, if you find a limited edition pen, you will often find that you're going to have to buy the display model such as this one. And I've ran into this many times. I had a opportunity and I'm kicking my teeth for not getting it. It was a glacier white Mont Blanc Meisterstuck Le Grand, exactly like this one. Um, and you would actually have seen that around this area, you could have seen the caps, the six peaks of the Mont Blanc. I wished I bought it, but what put me off is 
the fact that it was a display model. Try not to do that. If you have the money and you want to buy a luxury pen or Mont Blanc and it is a limited edition piece, don't say I don't want to buy it because it's a display piece because it's limited edition. They don't have many of these lying around in a box and just pull the trigger, take it. Uh, I mean, I'm sure that the people at the store probably does take good care of it or you could go and buy it online. But um, by and large, it's just a really interesting point. I would make, you know, you want to go and get a limited edition piece, don't stop, just get it. Just It might be a display model, but don't let it put you off, to be honest. So that's generally the roundup for what I am using for February, what I've got inked up. Um, next week, I'm going to be going to the London Pen Show, so I'm looking to find what kind of interesting, weird and wonderful things and interesting pens I can get from there. So I cannot wait. I cannot wait to show you guys what I'd be coming back with. I will have to admit I'm on a bit of a budget because, you know, life and things. But um, it will be an interesting experience. I've uh, never been to a pen show myself, so I'm really looking forward to showing you what my London pen show haul is like. And we'll post that video up next week. So thank you very much, guys. Do like and subscribe. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And for any of the pens that I've already spoken about, I'll be putting a description and the link below so you can have a look at them. All right. Thank you very much.